Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. I am your host, Jason. Thank you so much for stopping by for this latest episode of Good Trouble, the series where I talk about culture stuff in the spirit of education and compassion. The last episode in this series was a lot of trouble. I'm getting into the guts of it, the white replacement theory and the white supremacy. I gave my little pyramid structure, I ran down those levels. I wanted to end this series off on a positive note. I truly believe that for those of us who cause trouble and want to have difficult and honest conversations, I think we need to do uh, as much as we can to articulate a positive vision. What is it all for? Yes, we cause trouble, but it has to be for a vision, a mission, a cause, something good. So for this last episode, I'm going to articulate my vision of what a multicultural space looks like, applying it to board games. This is my multicultural vision for board games. Yes, we're gonna go optimistic and utopian. Uh, this is the good in the good trouble, so I'm eager uh, to get to it. So this is Shelf Stories, this is my channel, this is my attempt to bring something positive to the community, have honest conversations, but also bring good things as well. And I got gaming talk, I got history talk, I got mental health. The mental health hasn't happened as much uh, recently because a lot of the culture stuff has taken the front, but uh, look at my channel, uh, look at the back catalog. I have a, over 100 videos at this point uh, over the span of 15 months uh, for you to enjoy. If you support what I do, you appreciate my advocacy, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel. It's the best way that you can support what I do. I will never monetize, especially the educational portions, the good trouble portions. I don't want ads sticking in there uh, that might be a cross purposes of what I'm saying. Keep the mind clear, focus. So the best you could do, like, subscribe, share it out. Share the word. I truly appreciate it. So this is going to be a fair amount shorter than other Good Trouble episodes because we're not in the multicultural world. As a matter of fact, in some ways, we're struggling mightily uh, to get there. I think it's worth the time and effort, though, to articulate some uh, principles. Uh, these are principles and values that animate me, and I hope to share them, uh, you know, kind of cultivate some of that stuff in culture advocates or folks who are just interested in these conversations. My first principle for a multicultural gaming world, any gamer is welcome. Anyone who wants to play a game will find a table that will welcome them. No gamer left behind. King Peppy from the movie Trolls agrees with me. I don't think King Peppy made it. <gasps> when I say no gamer left behind, I mean no gamer left behind. And yes, I want to put my ass out for that one. So what does that mean? In the multicultural gaming world, there will be no discrimination on the basis of fixed categories or things that people hold closely in their identity. Race, heritage, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, level of ability, young, old, black, white, male, female. If you exist on those spectrums or if you're outside those spectrums in various ways, you are welcome in this community. And not only that, we have different groups within gaming that uh, we should all celebrate. So you have your adventure gamers and your Euro gamers and your war gamers. You have party gamers and you have children's gamers. Uh, and we can you know, include all sorts of folks, RPGs, video gamers. And if you keep on going, you'll find all over the world there's gaming. I think there's an instinct and a scarcity mindset to gatekeep, that if we define this too broadly, then we're going to lose the sense of being a gamer. I'm willing to say, okay, there are some folks that are hobby gamers, which I clearly am, but I get a wonderful, warm feeling whenever I see gaming in any form out there in the world. An East Asian family playing Mahjong, gamers. A South Asian family playing Karam, gamers. A Latino family playing dominoes. Gamers. That one even made it to a song that started a revolution. 60 años tranca domino. Meredith Palmer, who played solitaire for nine seasons of The Office. Gamer. So I define gamer pretty extensively. I don't apologize for that. Once again, it comes from an abundance mindset. All are welcome. And I mean it. And so that might sound a little bit 
uh, like a disjunction relative to the uh, stuff I talked about in the last video. I presented this pyramid uh, with all these things that I uh, feel are negative, but I must point out that these are practices. These are behaviors and mindsets. This is the uh, pyramid of white replacement fear, but it isn't isolating any one particular person. It is trying to isolate a mindset, a cultural mindset. And as I say uh, in the last video, in this video, and at the close of all my videos, if you could change your mind, you could change the world. This pyramid represents intolerance. The multicultural gaming space is a tolerant, deeply tolerant and welcoming space. I have said uh, many times, I do not want fewer games. I don't want to cancel any game. I want more games. I want diverse games from diverse sources. So uh, if you happen to enjoy uh, the games that people find difficult now, I actually have uh, no inherent problem with that. You want to play a colonization game? Go right ahead. You want to play a game with a ton of cleavage? Go right ahead. All the difficult stuff. Our issue, my issue in particular, but I know that other people feel the same, isn't that they exist, but that they're central. Or they tend to be central. You get a Kickstarter, you want to get some attention to it, go ahead and put some uh, uh, women on there with some chainmail bikinis, TNA poses, etc. Uh, you want a Euro game that appeals to a uh, German audience that, uh, for whatever reasons, they uh, like that history, they, they resonate with that time period. All right, let's go throw some colonization there. And that becomes the default way to make games and get attention for games. And so what is uh, being sought isn't to just get rid of games entirely, but to dislocate their centrality. And if we want, if we have new games that are in the center, that they are uh, more representative of a multicultural reality in some way. I don't know what that looks like specifically, but that is what is being sought. So if you want to misbehave in your game, and I did a video on that too with my good friend Liz Davidson. If you want to play your colonizer, if you want to play your mass murderer, or, uh, Jack the Ripper, your true crime thing, all on down the line, I that's not a problem. And when I say all are welcome, I really, really mean it. So here's something to consider that I've actually thought long and hard about. It is not so easy to distinguish a person from a mindset or uh, how they think or what they believe and all that kind of thing. In a lot of ways, those things can be kind of fused, one of the same. I guess I speak from a deep place of faith in people. If a person has intolerant views, if they engage in intolerant behavior uh, on one level, as an individual, my faith is that that person can still be reached uh, can still be approached as long as there is a, a little bit of an opening and an inkling to do so. If they choose to go another way, then that's the choice. Uh, I continue to hold that maxim. The only thing I don't tolerate is intolerance. But I would love to try to build this multicultural world uh, with everybody in tandem and to let it speak for itself. If, if people feel welcome, then maybe they drop the intolerant behaviors and attitudes all on their own. That is what I choose to fight for. That brings me to my second principle for a multicultural gaming world. We love and cherish everyone for their uniqueness. We celebrate and emphasize diversity and we promote inclusion and representation for all. And I know there are some people who make the association. What does diversity and inclusion mean? Does that mean that it is inclusive for some but exclusive for others? I reject that utterly. Once again, whether you're in the spectrums, uh, black, white, male, female, or outside the spectrums, or however you self-identify, this space not only will work for your inclusion, it will celebrate your uniqueness and whatever you bring. And I got a quote for that. This one might sound familiar. I have a dream. <laughs> My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. The one quote, the one quote that people know from MLK among all of his writings and teachings, the one that gets misinterpreted the hardest. So often people take that as that we should just not see race and we should you know, see just people and judge people on their character, not anything that they can't change skin color or whatever. That is fraught with pitfalls. That denies 
people diversity and it erases way too much. Look at the words that are said. He didn't talk about seeing. He talked about judging. I've talked about this in a previous video. Uh, yes, I do have videos for a lot of this stuff. We, as human beings, we affiliate. We tend towards the familiar. It makes us happy. It gives us blood flow and it gives us a, a, a neurological, psychological reaction when we see something familiar, including race, ethnicity, gender, etc. And the, it's not as strong where something is different. So we see racial difference, like it or not, but we don't have to judge based on that difference. What I would like to see, I know this is utopian stuff, is uh, a person who identifies as gamer. That one will promote that blood flow and that familiarity just by their self-identification as gamer. And that's where the love and cherishing can begin. And for me, I've, you know, I'm a traveler, at least I used to <laughs> back in the day uh, in college. I've been uh, all over the place and everywhere that I've gone, whether it's some exotic locale or right here in the USA, uh, you know, all 50 states. Uh, if you can have me share your wonderful food, uh, tell me your wonderful tales, open your table. I would love to play. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring back this dumb pyramid one more time to articulate the difference between the old mindset and the new. The paradigm in that old mindset was the melting pot. So the theory being, if you want to make a multicultural world, you have your pot, it's, it's boiling with whatever it is, you add the ingredients, it all melts together, and that's how we get harmony uh, in the society. What we have found, those of us who like uh, diversity, that the pot melts too much. Certain things melt and they're fine. They're you know, perfectly happy uh, to be in there. Some things don't. It melts language. It melts particularity. It melts cultural traditions and comes out with something that is very uh, enduring, uh, a little bit too enduring for someone uh, like me who likes to emphasize diversity. Rather, the uh, paradigm that I learned when I was growing up was the salad bowl. So the salad bowl has different ingredients and, you know, everything tastes differently and you can kind of combine things a different way. But at the end of the day, each of the ingredients retains its identity and flavor. So is that possible? Uh, can we uh, live in this multicultural space without, uh, you know, melting together and emphasizing difference? For me, I'm willing to give the old college try. My third principle for a multicultural gaming world Every gamer can potentially contribute something positive. Every gamer can potentially make a game or make content for games or create open spaces, uh, maybe found a cafe or run a convention or, uh, you know, in a small scale, open their tables or create online community. Or even if you're someone who just wants to sit down and play, but they do so in a positive uh, way, every gamer could potentially contribute something constructive and positive. So that looks uh, a lot of different ways. So the multicultural world wants to cultivate people's talents. Everyone has talents. That's a kind of a, a thing that we believe in. So if you have a talent, we want to cultivate it. We are richer as a result. In the cultural realm, this is the multicultural uh, vision after all, I think this involves deconstructing the very concept of race. Wow, that is nuts. I've spent hours and hours talking about race. This is part five of Real Talk and Racism. That's how you know this is the last video because this is the one where I envision breaking down the construction of race. How useless is the category white or black or Latino? These are so overly broad, invented to sort us into hierarchy. What I would love to see is instead we identify in terms of culture, heritage, ancestry, ceremony, practices, uh, these things, when we break them down to the local level and celebrate our locality, we could actually chuck the concept of race entirely, or at the very least, de-emphasize it for more interesting stuff. Uh, to me, whiteness bores me. Nothing positive 
comes out of just the category of whiteness. But if you tell me you come from somewhere, you come from uh, anywhere in America, the different localities in America, South, North, East, Heartland, uh, wherever, if you come from Europe, the different countries in Europe with so many uh, different areas that I would love to visit uh, if I ever am blessed with the opportunity everywhere in the world. Uh, Latino, <laughs> you know, Puerto Ricans are not Mexicans are not Colombians. Are, you know, there's so much diversity if we tune out of those broad categories and get in touch with the lands and the cultures where we originate. So making this a little bit more concrete, I think we haven't done a very good job in the current world cultivating uh, contributions from all places. I think a center has been able to you know, produce a lot of stuff and there's a tendency to borrow from other places, appropriate, and I've, I've spoken about those in videos too. And uh, what we get are sometimes good, sometimes not so good. But, you know, whether uh, be, in the act of borrowing, we're getting kind of, you know, stereotype stuff and stuff that, you know, is inauthentic, not as good as we can get. If we cultivated contributions from all the different locations, all the different cultures, again, we're not emphasizing race. We're emphasizing locality and heritage. Anyone who knows anything and has studied that stuff knows that that can produce all sorts of wonderful things that if they're presented in the right way and cultivated, people will want and enjoy. Now, I've gotten a surprising amount of pushback on this uh, subject from people who look inside themselves and they don't see a lot of cultural contribution to make. Uh, they are considered by society as normal, and normal in this way means boring. Who would want that? Well, I'm not giving up hope. I'm not giving up hope that a person can make something and that it can be received in some way. Everyone has talents. We can develop those talents to, to uh, encourage something and see what happens. Or in terms of culture, where does culture come from? Culture comes from just human behavior, humans interacting, humans engaging in meaningful activities, work, family, community. We look inside those things and either we find something that we didn't realize uh, was meaningful and uh, might have uh, appeal to a certain person, or culture is always changing. We can make something new. And so those are three principles so far that guide my cultural advocacy, and they're principles that I hold deeply in my life and in my practice every day. Faith, that even when people are in the wrong direction, mindset or behavior, that they can come to a change and adopt something more constructive. Love for all peoples in their uniqueness and diversity. Hope that everyone has something potentially positive to contribute. Faith, hope, love. If that has a familiar ring, then go ahead and give a shout out. I'd love to hear from you. My fourth and final principle for a multicultural gaming world, stamina. I am all too aware of how far we are from realizing this vision. And the obstacles are many. I've experienced them all. They could come from the external. So I'm saying my stuff and then I'll get that pushback. And I will you know, engage with the pushback as much as I can. I want to understand. But so much of the pushback is a coded in a projection. They're not listening to me. They have a projection of what they think I'm saying, what they think they're losing, and that becomes so hard to discuss and talk with. Sometimes the difficulty might come from my own side. So I'll say something or I'll have a, a certain approach, but then I'll see somebody else have a, another approach, perhaps not so constructive because we're human. Of course, I express solidarity with anybody who fights for a multicultural world, but I have to admit that the tactics aren't always the most constructive, and you know we can, that can set us back too. Inside, I doubts. You know, I, I hear myself. I'm editing the video and listening to myself talking to this microphone, and thinking to myself, "This sounds crazy. Who's going to listen to this? Who's going to buy this?" Uh, you know, they might like how it sounds, but is this really possible? And the, a really profound one, uh, a really profound obstacle that I wrestle with on an almost daily basis is complacency. It is easy to take it easy. It is easy to go along 
to get along with. So many times I have you know, thought to myself, ah, this is such a pain in the ass, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, I could just sit here and play games. I got plenty of them and I love every game on my shelf. Uh, why not just you know, check out and take the advice that I get from a lot of people. Just enjoy this and play games. So I have to pretty frequently remind myself that making multicultural spaces is never, has never been easy in any level of community. I'm a big history uh, person, American history, as people know from watching the channel. Uh, you know, go back to the founding documents. We the people and all uh, people are created uh, and endowed with inalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, all that stuff. Okay. High flutin rhetoric. Uh, talking about how people uh, should be running their own country, democratic style. When you look at it, it started off as white, male, landed gentry. And it was through the efforts of the advocates who believed in that vision to slowly expanded things and who were tireless in their efforts and who got support from those around them. So, you know, uh, I know uh, it sounds pretty grandiose. I truly believe in this vision, just in this little uh, community. And I am blessed to, uh, you know, be helped along by the efforts of others who are also tireless in their advocacy. So I've heard from people that I inspire them. I know there's plenty of people out there that inspire me too. And so together we can cultivate that stamina to never give up. Multicultural gaming spaces that are inclusive of all are worth it. Wow. That was one of the most unique, strange experiences I've ever had recording. This is so much different than a lot of my other videos. Uh, with good trouble, uh, I usually pick a topic and it's something that people are discussing. People agree, disagree. And uh, even if I don't uh, or I can't predict the actual arguments themselves, I kind of guess the tone, the overall uh, structure of what I'm going to engage with here. I honestly don't know how people are going to respond to this. Is this inspiring or am I nuts? <laughs> I would love to hear uh, in the comments below how what you think about my vision. All I can offer is that this is authentic. Uh, these are the virtues that animate me. Do I always follow through? Uh, does it always happen? Uh, not really. I'm a bit firm believer, though. You either win or you learn. There is no failure. So sometimes I've gotten some wins, you know, uh, reaching people or reaching publishers, getting some games kind of turned around a little bit. Sometimes, you know, uh, I fall short. It's a learning experience. Uh, so with this video as well, I sincerely hope that people uh, receive it in the spirit in which it was made and that uh, you know a little bit more about me at the very least. If you can change your mind, you can change the world, people. So until next time, later, everybody.